How's it going guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle and today we're going to be talking about Tales from the Dark Side. This is Season 3, Episode 16 and this one's entitled Red Leader. And no, it has nothing to do with Star Wars. Um, anyway, this came out February 15th, 1987, so the day after Valentine's Day. It doesn't factor into the story, just thought I'd mention it. Uh, this is directed by John Sutherland and written by Edith Swinston, who has written a lot of Dark Side episodes. You see her name pop up a lot. Uh, this episode stars Joe E. Tata, Carmine Cardini, uh, Baroni Farrell, and Peter Brom Bromelo as the Red Leader himself. In this episode, you get a scumbag businessman, really an uh, anthology horror archetype, and his business partner has died, and now he has full control over the business. However, the business partner is going to tunnel his way out of hell, and they'll talk and find out about the way hell works and what this guy is scheming to get ahead in hell to sort of make it big in the world, or in this case, make it big in the underworld. The wheeling and dealing still goes on even after you're dead, it seems. And overall, I did like this episode. It's not the biggest and best episode, not an absolute dark side classic or anything, but it still has some good ideas and does impress me with some of the things it does. Um, first of all, it's a little bit like The Christmas Carol, but twisted in a different way. The idea that there's this, you know, businessman, his partner's dead and has come back to see him, and other spiritual entities will show up as well. But the ghost in the Christmas Carol wanted to help Scrooge. These are all interested in business and hell politics and stuff. They don't want to help you. In fact, there's a few things they want that are going to run counter to your goals. Gotta watch out for them. So yeah, a little Christmas Carol-esque, not a Christmas episode, but a similar story. The other thing is this is a, b a bottle episode for Dark Side, as a lot of them are. It takes place in this one office, um, the, the main guy's big office, but it still establishes the world of hell really well. It does a good amount of world building, despite the fact that we never actually see hell any more than a little hole in the floor that the friend tunneled out of. And, yeah, world building in a bottle episode? That's pretty nuts to try to do. A world in a bottle. Uh, but the way the characters talk about hell and the way they explain things and the other ones that pop up, you do get a good sense of how it's run down there and what's going on. And it never feels like they're just dumping expository dialogue. And so many modern movies do that. And I think why it doesn't feel bad is A... The, the guy in real life is an architecture mogul. He runs a big building corporation. And Hell works kind of similar to that. So we can see the parallel between what we know and, and what we don't. So it's not a huge leap. But also, the way the characters describe things, there, there's enough passion behind it where, you know, you really do get engaged and you want to feel more. And it doesn't feel like a homework assignment, which so many other movies, I, I kind of cringe when I hear world building nowadays, because so many times I equate world building to expository dumps and lack of plot, but here it's worked naturally in the dialogue, it entices you to go, well, well, how does hell work? And it's done much better, even though we don't see hardly any of hell. Again, just a little hole in the floor with some red light popping out of it. But that's apparently all you need, so good job on Dark Side for making a world in a bottle episode. Um, and yeah, there are times when the focus could be better, it could be tenser and packed a little bit better, but overall, 
I think this is still a really fun episode. Not an absolute dark side classic, but definitely one you'll think of from time to time, and it does a good job at what it does, and it has an interesting concept. Overall, it's cool, but not the best. Anyway, without further ado, let's talk a little bit about the plot. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to say my piece on a few plot points, analyze this thing here and there, and it makes you guys have a, the idea of what's basically going on, but I'll be avoiding too much of the end. Anyway, we get our main character, and his business partner had a work-related accident on one of the construction sites. He was in a coma for a while and has finally passed on, and because he's a scumbag businessman, he's taking his partner out of the picture as much as he can, erasing his name from things, taking his, uh, his photo out of an article that's going to come out about the company, changing the company name where it's not so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so, but it's just him. So yeah, he's just died and you're erasing him as quick as possible. He gets an angry visit from the guy's widow. Uh, it turns out the dead business partner had massive gambling loans, and even though they weren't too terribly incredibly high, it turns out before he died, he... Uh, got a loan from the main character and as collateral gave the main character his half of the company. Well, even though those loans weren't too high, he died before he could pay them off and now the main character gets essentially everything and they make it clear the wife is just interested in the money, doesn't really care too much that her husband dies and says to the main character, you're a, jer a jerk, I'm gonna sue you. And yeah, he is a jerk, and yeah, in real life, you would probably try to sue this guy. I don't know how much success you'd have, it depends on how much of the deal is in writing, and how specific the wording was, and, and what actually happened, and there's probably a whole array of different assets, and in turn, I'm glad the episode didn't go too far down this route, because I could see a really boring three-year court case coming from this as people just fight over money. But she storms out of there. She storms out of there, and right after she leaves, a jackhammer rips through the floor of his office. And it's his best friend who literally escaped from hell, tunneled his way out of hell to go see his former business partner in life. And it turns out, he wants the real books. You see, there's the fake books that they put out to the public that make the company seem better than it is. But there's the real books, just to keep track of what's really going on, that show all the terrible things the company has done, like evicting a bunch of old people and forcing them out into the snow to die so they can build a newer, expensive building there. Lots of scummy stuff like that. Well, why does he even want the books? It turns out, in hell, he doesn't have a great reputation. Yeah, he's a scumbag and he should be down there, but he wants to prove he was super evil in life because if he was super evil, he'll get a higher position. And his friend goes, Okay, I see why you'd want that to get out. I'm still alive, though. I don't want to tank my reputation. And his friend's like, ah, you'll be dead sooner or later, you might as well. And he says, no, I'm not going to go down to hell with you. Once I retire, I'll set up some charities and then I'll be fine, right? And they start to talk and debate about this when a minion pops up. You see, a minion is what the guy wanted to be. He's sort of the highest a human can get to in hell, working bigger jobs and have being more privileges a, a minion and yeah okay using that term after the despicable me movies came out it kind of does ruin it and oddly enough when the guy pops out he is wearing blue <laughs> uh the blue overalls with the uh yellow hat and the one big light yeah, I kind of wonder if the Despicable Me animators were Dark Side fans. I don't know. They, 
the overalls and stuff. Uh, but anyway, the minion tries to drag him back to hell, and they're surprised when their boss, the Red Leader, shows up. And the Red Leader is a cartoonishly evil businessman, the next step up from where our main character is. Big smoking cigar, big guy, really super diabolical and totally chews up all the scenes he's in. I don't know if he's supposed to literally be the devil or a step up, you know, some sort of manager. He, he's a big boss dude, though, and he'll come in and start to talk to the main character and apparently, the main character is even more evil than he thought he was. And we do get some wheeling and dealing here. But I'll stop with the episode. I, I won't go any farther. Um, I do want to say, maybe there's a little bit of an issue with kind of the focus. Because we get that sequence with the Widow at the beginning. And you think she's going to be like a super big main character. She is important, but then she kind of leaves for most of the rest of the episode. And then you get his best friend, who is really a good idea. You know, the talking between them, similar people in different worlds, and they can kind of joke about when he's alive. He's really cool. And then Red Leader shows up and kind of takes the focus away from him. But Red Leader is such a charismatic villain, you'd hate to say less of him. But at the same time... If we reduced the other two parts and focused more on the best friend, the episode would seem to have a little bit more focus, and it kind of drifts from character to character, so it may be not the best there. And again, you know, this, like I said, it establishes a world in a bottle episode. No easy feat, and we get all this stuff, and we understand a bit of how this version of Hell works. Interesting stuff there. If this was ever remade, if they bring Darkseid back and remake some of their classics, I'm not saying they will, I'm just saying if they do, it would be interesting to see this episode with a bigger budget and actually take a peek at what Hell is like, because it does sound interesting. But, um, yeah, it's really just the hole in the floor the friend tunnels in from. But again, they do a lot with that no budget. And overall, I thought this was an interesting episode. The characters that crawl out of that hole have a really cool look to them, you know. The best friend kind of looks like he's exploded in a cartoon. The minion, described him earlier, guy with the hard hat and the suspenders and whatnot. And then Red Leader himself, a big red suit that kind of looks a little industrial too. I, I think these character designs are pretty cool, give a sense of life to what really doesn't actually show us much. Um, overall, a good episode, not the best thing ever, not an absolute classic, but a fun little watch there, and I, I, I liked it, I thought it was cool. Um, definitely should take a look at it if you want to talk about world building expository dialogue, probably could learn a thing or two from that. Uh, anyway, definitely would recommend it, not go out of your way to watch this one first, but if it comes up, yeah, give it a watch. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my Tales from the Dark Side playlist, where you should be able to find my reviews for the past episodes. So yeah, this playlist is getting kind of long. I also have an overview for Season 1 and 2, a review of the Joe Hill comic, and I covered the Clive Barker episode a little bit early. So yeah, Dark Side playlist here, it's getting pretty big now. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.